Hello YouTube, it's Fate Hero here doing my Ezo deck profile. It's slightly different from um, what the normal builds apparently are, because every single build I see runs it very differently. So, I'm running Criff as my starting vanguard. I honestly think, if you go first and you get the superior ride to 3, it's almost a win condition in itself. The fact that you're so far ahead of your opponent, especially if you um, cross ride or anything, you get all that advantage in early guard you save. So that's kinda why I like Criff and plus um on Grand Ezel you boost this is still a thirty one hitting a really good number. And actually um you can if you have the Criff and a Gareth you can put them in the soul even if you don't have the Bowmane on Vanguard later. If you really need more soul for your Ezel if you really 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 have to. But other than that, that's why it's there. Trigger lineup, I'm running four Flame of Victory. Flame of Victory to build soul, which is why it's there. For Epona, because she's my favorite Liberator crit trigger. Um, right now I'm running 10 crit, so to play mind games with people, running two different arts. And two draw, I think I'm going to switch these for the Liberator draw, or any other draw really, that's not a 4k because makes bad columns. And the reason why I ran it is because when you superior call off Ezel, you can give 4 to something, but that's actually not very useful unless you're playing something like Spectro Duke. And then the four heal triggers. Napgall, best dog. And then to the grade ones, running four of the Jedi looking Gareth over there. Um, he is. Well, this deck isn't really archetype specific, so you can get away with running 8Ks, plus he's there for hitting the superior ride. And you can hit cross ride numbers and stuff with it. I run three 10k attacker tours, I believe. And uh, it's just nice to be able to call them in the front row and attack for 10 late, mid to late game when you don't have, or early game against their grade 2s, if you're at grade 3 anyway. It's just a nice card to have when you don't get all your attackers. I run um, 3 white lions because um, the fact that you can damage inflict yourself to either go to ultimate break or limit break early game, and then... Soul Charge 1 for the Grand Ezel if you're going to ride it. So, basically you have the extra soul building, the little limit break early game, and if you heal, you can go back to like 2 or something. Which is a really, really <laughs> game-changing ability if you heal on a damage inflict. And then, um, I run 3 Halo Shield Mark. I actually took out the Liberator Marks because the BT6 ones seem to work a little better for me and... I'm actually not going to build Liberators anymore. And then the one ingrain, this one is a proxy, but uh, have a actual copy of the card right next to it. Just to show that it's there. Because that's actually my friend's, but I didn't want to show up a fully proxy deck. And then the one, I don't know how to properly pronounce your name. Maligan? 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 I don't even know, but yeah. He's just there. For those moments when you're playing cross ride and then you just soul blast to either do the double unflip or if you're on normal Ezel and you happen to call it or have it in hand you can unflip too and then superior call again and make Ezel really fat. It's basically what it's there for if not, if it doesn't work, it doesn't, but yeah it's just that tech. Um, grade 2 lineup, I really like 10k attacker, or I mean 10k grade 2s, the vanillas because they're really defensive and they're just... I don't know, they seem to really flow pretty well with the deck, but you also need it for a crypt anyway, so can't go wrong with running four of them. And then the four bag Demigus, because they're your 12k attackers, late game, and you can't, I, I really don't have to explain that, honestly. I can't really say much about that. Um, Trip is the damage on the flipper for when you're on Ezel and Platina, they're pressure rear guard hitters to make your opponent guard. And it's also nice to just have the unflips in general. Because um, the way people are running it, pretty he counter blast heavy. And I don't know, I feel like you could be running a couple of these at least to mitigate all your counter blasts you use. And then just because can, the one blaster blade spirit. Because you can't go wrong with running blaster blade in any royal paladin or gold paladin deck. And then the grade 3 lineup, I run 2. Incandescent Lions because basically if you get it in opening hand 
or in the damage zone before you get your superior right off, you're going to have a bad day because you're <laughs> going to be really sad that it didn't go off and you can get the cross ride with it. And you build soul with Criff if you succeed. And then there's the two platinum Ezos. Um, there for the cross ride late game if you can. And just being that 13 body or using the ultimate break if you manage to get enough counter blast and whatnot late game to punch them really hard. And then the three grand Ezel, basically just to unlock things and swing with extra crit, which is something you don't see that often in Gold Paladin, apparently. It's kind of nice to have the extra crit and 31 on limit break. And the fact that it's technically a counter blast one, soul blast one. If you can maintain your soul and damage, it's a really heavy hitter. As long as you have the five rear guards, you punch really hard consistently. And that's kind of all I can say about this deck. I run it the superior right away, as opposed to the rear guard spamming, um, I guess, pure build of it. And that would be it. See you guys.